Hi guys, when reading this text, where would you think it comes from? These scriptures are the literal word of God, which he revealed to his chosen people through signs and incarnations. They were written down as God went on to speak. From the day the scriptures were revealed until this day, there have always been a huge number of followers who have memorized all of the scripture letter by letter. Some of them have even been able to memorize all of the scriptures by the age of 10. Not one letter has been changed over the centuries. Followers hold that this is unchanged to date. The scriptures which were revealed many centuries ago mentioned facts only recently discovered or proven by scientists. This proves without doubt that these are the words of God revealed by him in the book. This also proves that the scripture is the true faith and eternal law for all religions. It is beyond reason that anyone even before Abraham or even before Adam and Eve walked on earth could have known these facts, discovered or proven only recently with advanced equipment and sophisticated scientific methods. <laughs> well, it comes from the Hindus, written 4,000 years before Muhammad. Here's the quote with the Hindu names intact. If I were a Muslim, I would now start scratching my head and asking myself which one is more right. As I am not, I simply state that both can't be right, but they can both be wrong. If we look in other places, we can read, for example, in an RDF forum, that other books also say much the same about their own gods and heroes. As I distinctively heard Muslim miracle seekers mention mountains as pigs and that we have recently come to know that mountains have function, let's see what the Hindu Rig Veda says on this topic. So, well, this is not the Shruti and only from one of the four Vedas, but nevertheless the people who wrote the Quran faithfully copied the idea which seems to have appealed to them. And because we are talking about the Islamic Quran, they copied it several times, such as in 13, 15, 41, 50 and so on. You get the idea. What appealed to the primitive tribes of the 7th century was the idea that earth was being held together by nails, not necessarily round like here in the video, but pieces of flat carpet held together. And here the analogy actually fits the description in the Quran. But nailing together entire continents, while they didn't know about plates yet, seems a bit different when you consider what really takes place. This means that Muslims in the 21st century have a problem showing that the Quran is compatible with reality. Initially, the story was to stop earthquakes, but then when <laughs> they were badly burned by the all too obvious facts, Muslim miracle seekers quickly backpedaled and called it shaking or swaying. Well, as English is more precise than Arabic, we have a word for a swaying and shaking ground. Earthquake. So reality does not accept that the sheer weight of a human moving about causes an earthquake, which can be subdued by a mountain. So Muslims had to look elsewhere for an explanation for their so-called function prevent for a mountain. Prevent the earth from shaking. Nowhere does the Quran say that the mountain prevents the earthquake. But they were still limited by the darned use of the word pig, which they could not dismiss. While the Quran, unfortunately for Muslims, nowhere says earth is almost spherical or earth orbits the sun, it does say mountains are pigs. So they get creative and invented the word root for mountains in the Quran. This word was actually being used in the real world, albeit in a different context. But since when has that stopped a miracle seeker? Then they came up with the scientific words such as isostasy and Greek philosophers who had mused about buoyancy. The new result was that mountains were not the result of the movement of tectonic plates but were planted by Allah as stabilizers. Now that they knew the results, they went off to prove this. When I started reading up on this, I looked for the sources of this numerical claim. Because I don't have the bouquet book, I could not link him with this. I found the usual suspect, the Harun Yahya Dreamworks, where the claim is found on the webpage in the normal way and in the book Allah's Miracles in the Quran in the familiar copy-paste format. It is copy-paste as the footnotes are present as normal text. As hard as I tried, I was unable to trace this to the root of the document. I did find my favorite Egyptian clown on the way, the inimitable Professor Dr. Zaglul El Nagyar. He cites various surahs such as 86, the Nightcomer, 79, 
those who pull out and 78 the great news to provide us with the news that these sudden jerky movements really do require mountains so, i did not make this up and i don't think i could i'm sorry but it's really hard to keep a straight face here on this page you can read all about the function of mountains all the way to how some centuries ago the moon was split into two pieces and was miraculously glued together again well, so badly that you can still see the seams today and you can buy islamic taps when the british ones simply aren't good enough where does he get this from I wrote him a message asking for some sort of proof for his claimed academic credentials with the result that they disappeared from his page. I found out that his tuition function was at an Islamic faith school in the UK and an inquiry sent to the university where he allegedly obtained his PhD could only confirm that he enrolled, but neither his dissertation nor his exit level could be provided even though I explicitly asked for them. So what did I have so far? Well, not a lot. I did have a whole lot of claims without any proof or evidence and quite a few open ends. The Dawa sites all provide the same diagrams and the same text as per usual, but I could not ascertain the author. Here on YouTube, I found that um, the user Turner Chris one had already taken up the challenge and found that the often quoted Dr. Frank Press had made no statement regarding the function of mountains whatsoever in his book Earth and never said that it was to stabilize the Earth. It's all just a fabrication. He shows the same pages I had seen quoted as irrevocable proof so many times and that the text was changed to suit the claims in the Quran. So I decided to do a bit of digging on my own. I found that earthquakes, uh, sorry, the shaking of the ground, mostly occurred along the fault lines which caused the creation of mountains, which would also account for the earthquakes in those mountain regions. I found that isostasy actually is the opposite of a fixed mountain as it refers to the balance or equilibrium between gravity and the buoyancy of the crust which continuously fluctuates with the formation of new mountains. There are several kinds of mountains. Dome mountains are formed when melted rock pushes its way up under earth. Fault block mountains, then you have fault mountains, and you have volcanic mountains which are formed by hardened lava after spurting out of a volcano. And then this is what non-Muslim children learn at school. Reality. If you look at the continental crust, which is low density and thick, as opposed to the oceanic crust, which is more dense and thin, you can appreciate that to counteract gravity, the weight of a mountain being formed by moving tectonic plates requires a bigger root or base due to buoyancy. The final death knell is dealt to these intellectual lightweights when you consider the following point brought up in a forum where a Muslim was gloating when he found the word root in a mathematical geology treatise. However, if you go to the page in question, you find that if you actually understand what it says is that as erosion diminishes the weight of the part sticking out into the atmosphere, isostasy is the factor that causes the mountain to balance the effects of gravity and buoyancy moving upwards rendering the fixed mountain statement obsolete and totally, completely and utterly wrong. Sorry. Once again, it shows that the authors of the Quran had no idea of what humans would find a thousand years later and only catered for the immediate environment and era. It also shows that the Quran is a cocktail of Hindu, Jewish, Christian and Arabic superstitions, myths and legends, all mixed together and presented in a book only Muslims will call well written. If you really value your belief in an old book more than what the intellect should tell you, then do by all means believe that mountains have a function. All others I welcome to the real world. Thank you for your time. Oh, and if anyone can point me to the origin of this apologetic mess, please don't let anything stop you. Thanks.